Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to another week of Hollow Talk. Our guest this week is a Mr. X who wants to remain anonymous, and uh, Mr. X is a collector of holography. He has quite a impressive uh, collection of holograms, and he's going to uh, talk to us a little bit about getting started collecting and a few of the display techniques that he has, including some of the uh, actual pieces that he has in his collection. So that's uh, Mr. X this week coming up in just a moment. Uh, our next guest is going to be Dr. Jiang from Lake Forest College, and uh, this will be the week of March 29th, so you'll want to tune in for that special show as well. So like I promised in our other shows, we're not going to take up a lot of chit-chat when we get started, so we're going to go right to the interview. Uh, just as a setup, uh, we had a hard time hearing one another. Uh, it was uh, strange because he had a hard time hearing me, I had a hard time hearing him, and um, the thing is, the way that it turns out on the tape is I'm talking into a microphone, so when it's recorded, uh, you can hear me very well. Uh, Mr. X, on the other hand, because he was also coming through the console, um, his voice didn't come through as loud as I would have hoped it would. But I uh, took it into the sound editing program and tried to give him a little bit of a boost, so hopefully it's not that hard to hear uh, what it is that we're talking about. So... Uh, I'm just going to let the interview play. I'm not going to come back on after it's over. I just want to thank you for tuning in once again to another week of Hall of Talk. And here is the interview with Mr. X. Day, mm -hmm. you know. Wow. So uh, we're on the line with Mr. X. You want to remain anonymous. I can understand that. Right. I imagine you have some very valuable pieces. And the last place you want to go broadcasting who you are or where you're from is on the net. So I can understand that, and I'll respect that. But I know who you are. Thank you. I know who you are. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started collecting holograms? Because I imagine there's going to be a lot of people that's going to log on that are collectors. They may collect watches. Right. They may collect paper like magazines and postcards. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be interested in hearing what this is all about. Uh, is this a new area of collecting? Obviously not for us. Yeah. But how did you get started collecting three-dimensional holograms? Well, actually, I think it started when I was um, at a mall and they, at one particular store. I think it was called World Bazaar or something like that or one of those science-type oriented stores. They had holograms there. And I was just, you know, immediately attracted to them. It just really seemed interesting. Was this a couple of years ago? Well, this is like 11 years ago or so. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, following that, somehow I got a hold of a catalog source where I ordered some via the mail. And uh, I think it was, let's see, what was the name of the place? Something like... Uh, 3D light gallery, I okay. think it's called, mm -hmm. and I ordered from that way. And, uh, then I started getting interested in um, pursuing it further, and I found, uh, I located a few places like the Museum of Holography in Chicago, mm -hmm. and uh, they have periodic changes of the, you know, the exhibitions there. Mm -hmm. They have some really nice holograms there. So, so you, you also, not just commercial pieces that someone would find mm -hmm. maybe over in one of the malls, but you also have some of the um, art pieces as yeah, well. Yeah, I do. Yeah, like I've got pieces like by Larry Lieberman. Mm -hmm. uh, like I've got like Primary Woman and a number of others by him. Uh, I've got... Crystal Dreams, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. It's really a, a nice one with a head that has like cephalopod ears, which are, you know, it's a type of a fossil, like mm -hmm. it's related to the chamber nautilus. Oh, I see. Yeah. And I collect uh, fossils, so I was really excited about that one. Now, are they mostly reflection holograms? Yeah, I've got one uh, transmission hologram uh, from... Uh, Dr. P John Perry. Oh, yeah. From Holographics North, I think it's called. Is it one of his large format holograms? Yeah, it makes pretty big like stuff. like a 26 by 26 or something like that. Oh. It's, uh, it's called the Painter, mm. and it's uh, like a full color hologram, and it's animated where the guy paints in, 
about two feet out of the picture in the air with a paintbrush. Oh, my goodness. That's a really nice one. Uh, John Perry's going to be a guest on the show in the upcoming week. Wow, that's Yeah, neat. so we'll have to talk about some of his large format work. Where, uh-huh. where would, do you display these holograms in your home? Yeah, I have them all in one room uh, on three walls of the room. And in the middle of the room, I've got my computer desk and everything, so it's kind of neat. Well, that's neat, yeah. Uh, I really have a lot of the holograms right next to each other because I have so many. And, you know, with, with kind of limited space and what I kind of devised and developed recently is I hang these strips from the ceiling uh, in between the halogen light bulbs that it helps to block some of the light and it doesn't, you know... uh, So you don't get any crosstalk, yeah. You know, with the way the, you know, how you have to have a single beam. What size are the panels? I use black cardboard panels you know, just like from Walmart, <laughs> and they're like, oh, about like seven or eight inches wide, and they hang down about like a foot and a half. And this allows you to pack your holograms closer yeah, together on the wall. Yeah, that way, you know, you don't have that interference between, yeah. you know, with the different lights interfering <laughs> with each other. Especially the image plane holograms, the ones that stick out, you know, they mm-hmm. really don't tolerate that well at all, and you don't want to get multiple images with those, so... Let me explain to the listeners that when you illuminate a hologram, mm-hmm. you have to have a single light source for right, each hologram, yeah. and it should be a fairly good distance away so that when the hologram looks at the light, it sees a pin source mm-hmm. of light emanating from the fixture. Mm-hmm. And what happens in a lot of settings is that when you get your holograms too close, the spread of that light actually begins to touch the holograms that are located on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the one that's being illuminated. And each one of those lights creates its own image. And uh, it's not a very nice effect to view. (laughs) Yeah. But you seem to have gotten around that quite a bit. Yeah, it works really well because you can have some, you know, that pictures that are actually touching each other except for the mat in between. And even so, you know, it it divides it really well that way. It's amazing how well that works. now you, I'm so pleased with that because before it was so frustrating, you know, you get double images and it just didn't work well. I think a lot of stores should try that too because I've noticed even, you know, with certain stores yeah. and things, and you know, I've seen just, that it doesn't they have the same problem. Mm-hmm. I think if some of those places used that, it would help. Yeah, I've got some other holograms that are multicolored, like from uh, Hans Buchelkagen. Yep. From Lake Forest College, and those are really nice. Uh, I really like those because they seem like, it looks like the real thing is right there. It almost seems like there's a hole in the wall, and you're looking into the hole, you know, and there's, it's just the really nice holograms. There's hardly any grainy appearance like mm-hmm. you might get in certain holograms. Yeah. They're really clean and well done. Yeah, the full color holograms are absolutely incredible. Yeah, they're spectacular, <laughs> really. It, you just think that whatever it is that you're looking at is right in front of you. Yeah, it seems like it. What type of lights do you use? Are they special fixtures or just the type that, like, I, I have a lot of different track fixtures. Yeah, here. I use the tracks also. and uh, For some, of I use the halogen bulbs usually, like, 75 watts or yeah. 50 watts. I think they're like MR16s or something. Right, MR16. And for some of those, it depends. There's certain holograms that don't even work well with those because they, they're hazy regardless, mm-hmm. even if you use those. So yeah. I, what I do is I put um, small aluminum, like just out of aluminum foil, uh, pieces right on the lens part and the front part of the bulb, and then I put a little slit in those with scissors, you know, I mm-hmm. put a slit, oh. and that seems to work. But you got to really watch with that because you can overheat a halogen bulb, yeah. so you can, you only have to, you have to fix it on there, fixate it just with, you know, the slightest amount of aluminum foil because if you put too much, it just overheats. You know, I've had mine. Well, they started to, you know, give off a smell from smoke or something, so you have to watch with that. 
Now, I know you follow a lot of different things with holography, including some of the theories of Dr. David Bohm and some of the other people that uh, yeah, work he, on the uh, philosophy of holography. Yeah, I met him a few times, and he's in, well, when he was alive, he was a professor of theoretical physics, and uh, he had some really um, unique ideas about you know, the relationship between holograms and the universe and how possibly the cosmos is holographic in nature. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, that was really interesting, talking to him and discussing philosophy with him. There's a really good book, if people would be interested, that deals with uh, some of his ideas and with holograms and that kind of a thing. And it's re- fairly simple, you know, in terms of reading. It's called A Looking Glass Universe. Okay. And uh, F. David Pete and uh, John Briggs are the authors. Okay. Here's a couple, Looking Glass Universe. Looking Glass Universe. And, and a couple other titles they may want to look into is uh, Wholeness and the Implicate Order. Yeah, that's by Professor I think, Bone. I think he did that maybe in conjunction with uh, Krishnamurti. Right, yeah. yeah. Krishnamurti is yeah. a philosopher. He passed away also, but... Some of his uh, ideas I'm really appreciative of, too, because he deals a lot with holistic aspects of things and how the observer is the observed. You know, that's one mm-hmm. of the principles that he talks about, which is really interesting. He talks about how people can have superficial minds, and it's interesting when you think about the fact that people, a lot of people are just happy with two-dimensional pictures and you know, they don't have minds with much depth, but it mm-hmm. <laughs> seems like uh, holograms offer more, you know. And people just look, need to look more deeply into things. <laughs> what, uh, if, for our listeners that are on here, maybe for the first time, mm-hmm. um, what tips would you give to someone? That, with, with buying holograms? With, with getting started, because getting started. it can be expensive for some of the better pieces. Yeah, well, there's a really, when I first started, I mostly did get just the smaller films, and there are some really good film holograms that are just outstanding, and they're, you know, relatively inexpensive. You can really get super holograms for a decent price. Uh, Some of them are really, you know, philosophically oriented, I think. Like, there's a lot of film holograms that are inexpensive that deal a lot of, with, uh, like, M.C. Escher's work. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, yeah, artist. yeah. And his stuff is just unbelievable in terms of relating, you know, philosophy and that kind of a thing. So uh, Third Dimension Limited made a lot of the ones by him that I have. And, uh, you can get those, you know, from various sources, uh, you know, on your, in your whole museum website, there's, some places that you can link on to that have those. And, mm-hmm. You know, they're really nice. Yeah, they're, they're easy to order now on the net. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very convenient yeah. because there aren't a lot of holography shops. Yeah, it's and, the same. You know, it's know, not like every neighborhood has one. You I know, think I, it's really an, it's an art form or whatever you'd want to call it that's not appreciated enough by people. You know, mm-hmm. It's just a shame in a way. Because it really is so beautiful, and you know, there's a lot of implications with it philosophically and all. And I don't know. It's just people don't seem to appreciate it as much as it should be. But maybe someday that'll change. Hopefully. I think so. Yeah. We are in the age that people will look back on, and we'll probably consider ourselves very lucky that we had the opportunity yeah. to live during the time that we lived. That's you true. have a lot of memories. Well, I want to thank you for being a guest, Mr. X. Yeah, thank you. And uh, right. you get a lot of people to come on and hear what it is that you have to say about collecting holograms, and uh, maybe perhaps you've inspired a few people out there to get started on their own. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish there were more information about collecting. There's a lot of information on collecting other things. Yeah. Like, <laughs> You know, yeah, books and all kinds of you things. can buy books to find out what year something was made and what serial numbers with it and, you know, how many were made. And uh, hopefully someday maybe we'll see something like that with holography. Yeah, that would be great. Boy. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 
Uh, good night to the listeners, and then I'm going to rip these headphones off and grab a hold of you before we hang up, okay? Okay. Okay, so hold on. Okay. Thanks Great. for tuning Thanks. in, folks.